Sarah, Glasgow City Academy manager, a few months in now, how does that feel, you're, you're the academy manager here? Feels like I've been here forever, to be fair. Feels like I've never been away. Um, no, it's been great. Like The club are really good with me and they kind of leave me to it and let me crack on with my coaches and my volunteers, etc. So it's been really good just getting my feet on the ground and kind of getting my head around everything the first couple of months. Well, looking ahead shortly, but I need a bit of nostalgia. You, you spent you know <laughs> four or five years here as a player. You had some great spells, won trophies, you had a, a big injury setback, came back and, and continued playing. Um, big memories of a player, what what do you have? Oof. Oh, there's a few. Um, we beat FC20 over in uh, in Holland um, when we won 2-0 and I came on and scored the second when it was a wee bit backs to the wall. Um, standard Liege, last 32, it was my birthday, um, scored a goal as well then, it's all about goals. But the basic exit is through to Sarah Crilly on the right hand side. Also, Billy Cross had the goal! It's in the back of the net! It's Sarah Crilly! A fabulous finish on her birthday! And it's 3 0 to Glasgow City! Uh, whilst I was injured, we qualified for the quarterfinals of the Champions League. Huge credit to the club, but ugh, there's so many memories. I couldn't pick one specifically, I don't think. The trophies have been great, but more so the girls and things that I've met along the way are still very close friends just now. They seem Lord in space to quickly get on with the throw. That's a nice bit of skill away from Brown Lee. She keeps hold of it. And there it is. Norman goal. And yet another big goal in recent weeks from Sarah Trilly. No, the site were playing quarterfinals, you weren't playing, and then you came back in 2016 and, and you were scoring goals and helping then for 10 in a row, so you must be pleased that you managed to come back on the pitch and, and create more memories with the club. Yeah, exactly, because there was a time that I did doubt whether I was actually going to get back to that level, and thankfully due to my teammates, the coaching staff, um, the staff at Scotland as well, like they all helped me push on and I actually became the fittest I've probably ever been whilst I was injured, because that's all I could really work on whilst I wasn't allowed to do football. Um, but no, it was great to be able to get back in and help the team and kind of be in that team environment because you do miss out when you're injured if you're not at training. Like You miss that team cohesion element of it, so it was really good to get back in and, as you said, create even more memories winning 10 in a row. Is it, I think everyone kind of mentioned it. Is it true that once you kind of... The one always set a tag, once you kind of get involved with the club, it never really leaves you the bug? Yeah, I would say so. And from the ones that I know that have left, still... It holds a special place in your heart, I would say. You don't understand it until you're in, I wouldn't say, but once you're in, I would say it never leaves you. Since you left City as a player, you've done a lot behind the scenes in the game and the sport, and also you still played a little bit. Um, since you left City as a player and you've rejoined City now as, as head of the academy, what's changed with the club? And, and well, A lot's changed in terms of the women's game, but in terms of the club, what have you noticed the big things that have changed in the last five, six years? I think it's taken strides forward in the youth game, to be fair. Um, it was always something that wasn't the main focus of the club back in the day. It was the first team, but now we've got the huge community, over 200 academy players, so that's taken strides forward. We've got the community side, we've got the performance side, so we are a club for all and our numbers at every age group are great. We're competing at every level, so it's really good to see and hopefully um, in future we've got some Glasgow City first team players right now in the youth. Is it testable that the club and, and the foundation as well, the charitable side, are doing this and the, and the academy is getting stronger as well as trying to keep the first team strong in this professional era now the game's in? Yeah, I think so. Like The academy's just growing and growing and growing. Like the, I think we've got over 30-odd coaches, as I said, 200 players, plenty of other volunteers, like all your media team, etc. Like, so it's good to see that the club are pushing forward. Like The first team are doing great and they are the pinnacle, but behind the first team there is... 200 great girls, 30, 40 volunteers that are doing everything they can for the club and it is, it's doing it for the badge. And you've mentioned a couple of times that the fact that we've kind of broken the 200 uh, players mark which is you know remarkable really. Um, it was quite happened quite quickly as you came in, it almost was like a bit of a mission to try and get players in and you know we've got plenty of players particularly at certain age groups you know and you must be pleased that players have, have decided to join the club and, and you know we can cope with that and we've got the coaches and, and we're just growing steadily you know, now over the 200 mark. Yeah I think a huge credit to everybody that's gone before me so Cass, Laura and Jamie like they've grown the club and the academy to make it what it was and thankfully I was the one that took it over the 200 now I didn't have too many to get but right away as soon as I came in we had, we had to create four new 14s teams just due to the numbers that we had so that got us over the line right away with all these new players coming in and you still get daily requests from girls looking for teams at 
any age group from five year old or up to eighteen. So it's really good and it's we're always open to anybody. So anybody who has a daughter out there who wants to come and play football, just get in touch and we can make it happen for them. Absolutely. And as well as the academy players and managing you know, teams and games every weekend because there's lots going on at, at particular weekends and training through the week as well as kind of being part of the foundation that side of, of the branch of the club is kind of looking at the community as well and you've talked about girls in the community if they want to come play for the club how big is it that Glasgow City is a voice an independent club you know women and girls only club that is out there in the community likes of you know in GHA where a lot of academy teams play or up in the Petersell North Glasgow area that they're speaking out to girls to to you know, get involved with sport, get involved with football. I think it's really good. Like as you've mentioned, like we're now up in the Glasgow area at Peters Hill doing our McDonald's program, um, which runs Peters Hill Tuesdays four to five, and then we're actually into the North of Glasgow schools now as a kind of target group because there are a lot of girls there that maybe don't have access to football clubs because there's very few in that area. So there's so many different projects that the club are running that's kind of allowing more and more girls the opportunity to come and play football, whether it's once a week, twice a week, and then they're kind of filtering into the academy if they're enjoying it. They're, we've had a few from the McDonald's programme that have already came down and joined their under sevens or our under nines, so there's definitely plenty of opportunities now that the club have created through the foundation, um, and it's something that I'm really keen to push on with and have more and more projects so we can provide these opportunities for the girls who might not have access to them as easily as others. You touched on um, the work done previously and since in the last year or so you've had likes of Carolyn Stewart come on board within the foundation, Claire Shine balance the first team with, with our community projects and community work as well and um, plus you know the foundation board there's 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 a number of people now that are in <laughs> the academy and the foundation which you know, it's a different world from when you're talking about a few years ago. Yeah, exactly. I think well, when I played, it was just Cass and Laura. I think there might have been a board behind it that I didn't know about as a player. But now the fact that we have the club separately and their board, etc., the foundation separately, we've got Claire coming on through Coms World, getting into schools with other first team players and doing question and answers, telling their story. Like it's great to see. It just feels like to me, Glasgow City is now everywhere. Like whereas before, it was just that main focus of first team. Whereas any football that's mentioned, it's Glasgow City, Glasgow City, whether it been, oh, they were in my school or they were delivering Disney, they were delivering uh, McDonald's, whatever it may be, we're everywhere and it's really good to see and I can't thank the board enough for the support that they've actually given myself since I came in to allow us to do these projects and send teams to, for example, the 19s are going to the Foil Cup in July and the board have allowed us to do that, which is really good and something I'm keen to pursue for other teams as well. Yeah, absolutely. As well as that, touched on the academy team was touched on the community but it kind of fuses together the fact that with changes go, growing in the, in the professional year in the first team there's changes positive changes at the youth level with the kind of performance pathway 14 16s 18s that's going to be coming shortly Glasgow City haven't shied away from the community aspect and the recreational aspect of, of, of girls girls want girls to play football and we will have a pathway going through to first team but if girls just want to play football and, and keep Know, athletically fit or just keep you know, in touch with friends. We've not you know, turned girls away, which how big is that that we've got the two kind of arms there in our academy? I think it's great to have the two arms because as you said there will be girls that want to come down, they want to compete, they want to be your future stars, your Glasgow City players, your Scottish internationals or whatever they may be from. But you do have girls, especially your kind of 16, 17 year olds that just want to come down, have a bit of football with their friends and the fact that we're able to provide that opportunity twice a week, three times a week for these girls is great. We've got a good group of coaches in leading them as well and it just kind of gives them that physical activity that they need that at that age. If it keeps them off the streets, great. Like They're more than welcome to come down. So I'm always keen to push for more and more numbers in our community side and give girls opportunities, as we said. And again, just if you were you know, 10, 12, 14 years ago, there wasn't anything like that. You know, no. You, and you, you, and for a lot of these girls coming through, you, know, you kind of, you know, you played, you know, some, the best club in Scotland at the time. You, you, you won medals. You, you were a Scotland international. You kind of reached your glass ceiling of where you could go. Whereas now, girls can actually come to the pathway and actually go one step further and actually play in professional football potentially. Yeah, exactly. Like when I was playing um, back in my day, I would say um, there were a few that were able to go professional, but now. 
like some of the girls asked this week, like are the girls full time at Glasgow City? And it's amazing to be able to say yes, this is their job. Like they're full time professional footballers in Scotland. Whereas ten years ago, I think there was maybe one, if that. Um, I think it might be Haley if she was still here ten years ago. <laughs> but no, it's great. Like the girls are, whether it be at Glasgow City or another team in Scotland, or if it's abroad, like there are now multiple opportunities for these young girls that weren't quite there. And that's credit to everybody, like SWF, Scottish FA, UEFA, FIFA, everybody that's kind of forcing women's football forward, which is really good to see. With Glasgow City in the foundation and your role within the academy, you've been here for a few months, we've already had some positives. What kind of ideas and, and plans would you like to implement or see or do in the in the coming maybe weeks, months or beyond? I mean, selfishly, I'd like to start an over-30s team just so that I can get my boots back on and play. Um, just a wee recreational team, so if anybody's looking, you know where we are. <laughs> um, and there's just a few different teams that I've got some ideas that I want to do. Um, I'm not going to reveal any of my secrets just now, but there's certainly some things in the pipeline, starting more projects, etc., and pushing on our mini-kickers and things like that. So there's a lot going to be coming in the next few months, I think.